the Vesuvio. So let's season your chicken. A little salt, a little pepper. So we're gonna do a little bit of flour, right? So a nice little tap in there. Tippity tap again. Shake off any excess. Give a little shake, let it snow. We're gonna do a little dip test. Take a little dip in there, throw it in. Hot tubbing. Baby hot tubbing. Watch your heat. Once it's golden brown, we can flip it, right? So let's move on to those mushrooms, huh? I got a pan going. You want a really nice hot pan for your mushrooms. You want to do it in stages. And you want to cut your mushrooms so you got a lot of surface area on there. And that's the key to making a nice golden brown mushroom. So we're going to cut these in, you know, fairly thin slices. We're going to get a little oil in there. We want to do this in batches, right? We don't want to throw all the mushrooms in at the same time. Give it a quick toss. You know, the key to great caramelized, beautifully golden mushrooms, don't overcrowd your pan. Let's check our chicken. To me, it sounds just about right. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's golden. It's crusty. We got all that juice from the chicken in our pan. It's going to be perfect addition to our au jus. Sorry, part of my French juice. We're going to hit that up in a little bit. Oh, looks delicious. Now, of course, potatoes, right? Always, always part of Vesuvio. They sit in that roasting pan and they just bathe in the juices of the chicken and bathe in all the white wine and garlic and spices. And rather than throwing them on the side, we're putting them on the sandwich because we're crazy like that. And my goal is to have a whole meal of chicken Vesuvio in each bite of that sandwich. So we're gonna cut these in long, beautiful wedges. We're gonna roast it in the oven at 475. And we're gonna put them right on the sandwich. All right, sheet tray with parchment. Let's not mess around here. I don't want anything sticking, right? We don't have the time. So use some parchment, go to the store, get your stuff. Our mushrooms, they're dancing, the oil's dancing in there, our chicken's dancing. Throw a little bit of that on there. We're gonna grab some garlic powder. If we use fresh garlic, it's just gonna burn. It's gonna get really nasty and bitter, so we don't wanna do that. We'll use some of that to infuse it with that garlic flavor. A little cracked black pepper. Let it rain from above. Don't be afraid to get high with it, right? Even coating. Look at that. Maybe a little too high, depending on the breeze and the time of the year. Salt, potatoes, eat up salt, so let's pull our potatoes out. It's been about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and once that side is nice and brown, you can flip it, right? Look at that, that's what you're looking for. Nice golden color, not too dark. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Back in the oven. Keep an eye on it, about 10 minutes, we're almost there. My wife hates peas. Until I made her this chicken Vesuvio sandwich. We'll transform any pea hater into a pea lover. We don't want these turning pale, we wanna keep them bright. Give them a quick season, salt and pepper. Give them a toss, they're already defrosted, so. Shut it down, let the residual heat do the rest of the work for you. Let's check it. Lovely, right? That's what we're looking for. Ready to move on to our pan sauce. Lower this down. We got our garlic and shallots here. Garlic, a very important part of Vesuvio. Always a ton of garlic. Season it. You want all that natural juices from the chicken. We want to utilize all this stuff in our pan sauce. Looks like it's time to add our wine. Pour a little bit for the forefathers, the people that taught us this recipe in the 30s when it came to Chicago. Some say it was by one guy. I believe it was invented by Vesuvio's restaurant on Wacker, which, uh, I don't know, some tells me that's probably the correct location where it was invented. So a little bit of that in there. Pour some fresh lemon juice. Straight from the source, right in there. All right, and of course, our seasoning, which is dried Italian seasoning and some crushed red pepper. Add your crushed red pepper to your liking. 
Don't go too crazy because we're going to add a lot of spice later with our hot jardinera. Just a little bit in there. And dried Italian seasoning, which is thyme, rosemary, oregano, the trifecta of Italian flavors, at least in herb form. So throw a little bit on that. Last but not least, our chicken stock. Let it go, turn it up. Awesome, let's grab our taters out of the oven. Kaboom, look at those. Perfectly golden, crispy, ready to be thrown into a sandwich. Let's do it, what are we waiting for, huh? Get a nice soft French roll, cut it. Leave a hinge on there. A little mayo on the bottom. Next, some provolone cheese, right? Two slices, you want it on the bottom because all that juice and all that heat's gonna seep down and help melt that cheese. Next, two wedges, potato, golden. Our beautiful chicken, just in half. Look at that. Lay it on there. Next, our mushrooms, earthy, our peas, perfectly cooked. And a little homemade jardinier, right? This stuff's got serrano pepper, so it's spicy. We got carrots, celery, cauliflower, red bell pepper, and it's all oil packed and brined, so every bite is spicy and crispy and fresh. And last but not least, our au jus. Let's cut it in half, right? I wanna see what we're dealing with right now. Put half on the plate. I'm going downtown. Come on. You know, to me, that's everything that I love in one bite.